up everybody, it's your boy Deathfall. We back and we live for episode 22. Today I had the opportunity to interview this guy. You know, he went to Lincoln University with me. He's a fellow Lincoln alumni. You know, he's the youngest chairman in the state of New Jersey. You know, he's a mentor, he's an author, he's a humanitarian, he's damn near everything. You know, uh, he's just out here making a, his name for himself and he's been doing a lot of things throughout the community for the, over a decade. You know, um, and when I say a decade, you know, this is going back in 2009. Uh, I graduated in 2014, it's 2019 now, he's still making moves. So hopefully you guys will like his story. You know, his story is very fascinating. Um, I, I really like his story, and I feel as though a lot of you guys will like his story as well. Um, at the end of the day, I feel as though a lot of people will be motivated. Why? Because it's an African-American around our age that's doing something very impactful for the community. Stay tuned. On today's episode, we have the man that does it all, you know. I don't even know where the hell I should start. <laughs> no, I'm serious, you know, we got a, 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 a fellow Lincoln alumni. Hell you. You know, uh, we have the youngest. <coughs> <laughs> Let me clear my throat. We have the youngest chairman in the state of New Jersey, if I'm not, if I'm correct. Yeah. You know, uh, we have an author, humanitarian, and also mentor. He goes by the name of Ashton Burrell. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Appreciate you, bro. You know, Appreciate how you. Doing you. Today, man? It's been, been a good? minute, bro. It's been a minute, yo. We can go back. We go From back the to drive. Lincoln, Lincoln Drive. Yeah, yo, bro. I, we go back to Lincoln Drive, man. For those that don't know about Lincoln Drive, that's the first show I ever started at Lincoln University. Um, yeah. You know, I had a radio show with Asia and Melissa. Been at and, it. Um, I was fortunate enough to interview Ashton back then, but um, we had introduced him as TC Uno because he was a a rapper at the time, you know, he's a man of a different, a man that wear different hats, you know. Um, but we about to just get right into it, man. You go by the name of the man of the impact. Yeah. What's the meaning behind that name, man? Yo, we just execute, straight execute, you know. Um, I think a lot of times, especially within the community itself, a lot of people have lost faith in a lot of their leaders. You know, a lot of mm -hmm. leaders nowadays is getting put on in a hot seat, you right. know, because people, you know, have access to more information now. So a lot of the stuff that people was telling people before, mm. they could go look it up within like seconds. Right, like, Google, you know, right, right. person could be giving a rally speech and the person could say something like this at, at 501, mm -hmm. 501, somebody on that phone like, Fix. whoa, but back in 2007, you was against this, yeah, like, right, right. you know, so I try to just execute in everything I do. And um, it's funny, one of my uh, peoples from uh, Detroit actually um, said that would be a good name mm. um, and, that's how that, that came about, yeah. Now, on the man of impact, you, <laughs> I didn't even know you was an author, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. it's to a point where it's like, damn, like, what don't you do, man? Like, you got this book, you know, called The Breakdown of Impact. Yeah. And what motivates you to write a book, and what is the book about? Um, so it's called, like you said, The Breakdown of Impact. Um, basically, what the book was, um, it was a, a daily guide to get people through whatever they was going through. So basically what happened was there was a young man in my mentorship program who um, who had came from incarceration and he was wondering um, how to make an impact. And he kept asking me, um, you know, what, what, what can help him make an impact? And I never sat down to think about it because, you know, a lot of times was just going through, to, throw, going through stuff. And that's one of the things I'm trying to learn about doing now, like really sitting in the moment of things. Okay. I feel as though a lot of times we just think you know, we supposed to be at this point because we're not enjoying the point that we at now. Right. And not realizing how far we didn't came from like yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, I sat down and did that and I wrote out what an impact is and I wrote it out each letter. Um, and I was like, this is what an impact is to me. And I passed it to him and he ended up graduating from high school, mm -hmm. you know, signing up for one of the community colleges. And um, it helped him get through his situation. So I said, Excuse me, if it's able to help him get through his situation, hopefully this could help some, someone Another else get through their, through their situation. So that's how the book came about. Now, did you have like mentors growing up like that, <laughs> that, that motivated you to be just like, you know, inspiring the different people? Yeah, so um, one specific person that inspired me 
Um, I'm originally from Philly, so mm-hmm. I was born in Philly, stuff like that. You got that 267 <laughs> too, but. I do. Mm-hmm. And um, my aunt, she actually ran a camp over okay. at Belmont, okay. um, down west, down okay. bottom. Mm-hmm. And um, she ran the camp there, and the way she just ran it, that always inspired me since I was young. You know, I remember she would charge whole houses of families, like six kids a house, $5 for the week and made it stretch, made it stretch. When I say made it stretch, right. we went to the movies, we went to the pool, we went to Clementon Park. Clementon like, Park, yeah, that you was know paradise I mean? back then. Yeah, yeah, young yeah. boy days, right. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, was a, you was a young boy in Philly, no, you know, no, young listen, in Philly, you know Clementon Park. Like, I think, listen, Cinnamon <laughs> Sin or is Clementon, uh, Jersey? I think, what is yeah. it, Cinnamon Sin? I, I, I just, I I just I I remember the commercial, they'd be like, come to Clementon Park. Park, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's back in the day uh now you have a mentorship program yeah. you know um i'm gonna try to cover as much information i can because it's, it's, it's a lot you got a track right for there, sure you know? for sure now um this live or live yeah live mentorship you mm-hmm. know um <clears throat> life and uh visions of evolution yeah like uh break down that um you know what that is yeah basically um what's funny is the idea of live I actually had it when I was about 16, so I was probably like about to be um, a junior or a sophomore. I was, I think it was probably like the end of my sophomore year in high school. Okay. And the interesting thing about that is I ended up starting the program my sophomore year of college. Mm. So they summed with them sophomore years. And um, when I did that, at first it was going to be life, okay. life in the fields of education. And that was a high school idea I had where I wanted to create a program where it put people in their fields um, of education. So say you in high school and you want to be a doctor. Mm. So maybe you could, get, you could shadow a doctor. Say you in high school and you want to work at a radio station. You could right. follow around somebody and start building a rapport with somebody who's already in that field. So by the time you get to college, you know, you, you know, like, you know, you know, I remember I got to college the first, I was a mass comm major. Yeah, then yeah, I ended exactly. up finished in business, right. you know what I mean? So. What I wanted to do was be able to plant a seed in, in, in young people's mind early so then when they do get to that point where it is time to go to college, it's like, yo, I don't even need college for this. You know, I could go this route. I could go this to this trade school because that's what I, I like to do. I've been following this guy around for all these years. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do right. and just help with the decision-making process a little earlier. And, um, you know, so when they would get to college, you know, they would they would already know what they was trying to do and they wouldn't have to waste time. I'm not saying that no, it's, it's a waste. And yeah. it's, it's the truth, though, because, you know, a lot of people, the first two years in college, you know, you're going through your core classes, you know. Yeah. You really don't start your major until your junior year. And then you have some people that are still undecided until their junior year, Facts. which prolongs their college graduation. Facts. You know, um, and speaking of college, you know, you got your master's degree from LU, Lincoln of course. University. course, yeah. And I'm currently in the process of getting mine as well, but yeah. um, you're in human relations. You yeah, know? yes. Um, congratulations on Thank that you, too, man. man. You Appreciate doing, it, bro. You're doing a damn thing, Appreciate bro. Appreciate it, bro. Um, I want to get back into, um, you know, politics. Yeah. Now, when I want to say it one more time. Politics, a lot of people our age, <laughs> um, our, that's our background, Yeah. don't get into that. Yeah. Um, what inspired you and what motivated you to you know, shift your focus that way? Um, it was a few things uh, that, that really shifted it. <clears throat> um, some of it kind of found its way towards me, where I kind of found myself in the, in the midst of it. Um, and I realized also, you know, as I started the mentor program, a lot of people that started to attract towards me was politicians. Mm. So I was like, man, that's interesting. Uh, that is politicians attracting more towards me now mm-hmm. because I'm doing this stuff with the youth. And then you realize, once you realize how deep politics is, mm-hmm. you know, that's when it's like, wow, like it's, it's it, to study it and, and, and really, you know, watch the playing fields of the, po- like I know Philly just had a big, um, I think uh, Jamie Blackwell, she just lost office, uh, I don't, yeah, I think she, I believe she lost office or I, I think she lost the vote. Okay. Um, I saw that. Um, so, like, just the shakeup in America right now is, mm-hmm. is, 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 is interesting because a lot of people that's been in office for so long, people are starting to challenge them. 
people starting to say like, yo, you've been in here for this day. amount of time. Right. It's a new day. Right. And, um, you know, I think those type of things, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, you got the, the younger generation saying, Yo, y'all been ha y'all had it for a minute. Like y'all yeah, ain't right. do nothing with it. Right. Like now we we come to take what's ours. And mm -hmm. you got the older generation like y'all like, not ready yet. Right, y'all right, not right, ready right. yet. Y'all gotta learn. And you know, in some cases that's true. Right. You know, because in some cases, you know, sometimes we, you know, we'll think that we need to jump into something and something like that, and then we might have an old head. Like I had that situation. So right. I'm speaking from experience, where I'm mm -hmm. like, man. F that man, like right. nah, nah, we need to ride. They like, nah, don't do that. Then it come bite you in the ass, and right. you like, right. oh, that's why you were saying that. That makes you know? sense. You gotta go through experience yourself. Got you to. You know, like you were just saying. Um, now with that being said, you won. Yeah. Now was you running against anyone? So I did. I end up. I was um, running against someone, and it came down. Um, it was a vote. It was mm -hmm. a vote amongst the the council. Right. Um, and I end up. Uh, getting the vote um the person i was up against tremendous woman right doing tremendous things uh nothing but respect to her mm -hmm. and my hat goes off to her um it was it was big for me because i was just like man you know I, I was you know so on the council you know we had like the deputy attorney general in the building you know we we in the attorney general's building right. you know having these meetings in trenton state <clears throat> capital um so it was like big for me, you know right. what I mean? And, and and especially from where I came from in the council, you know, I started on the um, executive committee. I started as a public member, then right. moved to the executive committee. Uh, a big salute to uh, Rich Rivera, who's the former chairman. And, um, and then from there, you know, just started learning everything a little bit and, um, you know, decided to throw my hat in the ring. And the response I got back, I was like, oh, snap. All right, cool. People rocking with me. Now, Vey, right there, can you explain to the people what's your responsibilities? Yeah, so um, right now, we what we're doing is we're reconstructing the whole thing. Like, we're, you know, we're rebuilding it. You know, it was kind of, um, it was kind of on pause for a minute um, through the governor changes and stuff like that in New Jersey. Right. And um, Christy, now, so, yeah. Right. So from Christy to Phil <laughs> Murphy now, and um, you know, so it was it was a shift going on. So, you know, now we had to wait till you know everything was in order. So now we back getting everything on board. But basically, we deal with the human relation problems in the state of New Jersey. Mm. Um, you know, s some of the things we have a we have a conference coming up for um, criminal justice reform um, over at King University. So we working on that right now. Um, and basically what we're trying to do is just get all the human relation uh, councils also, you know, back re re reactivated in every town um, and just get people on board and start bringing people out so we could really, you know, start digging into the, the you know, a lot of the, the issues that's going on within every community. Now, um, I want to, you know, do a backtrack real quick. Um, I know you said it's a lot of things that's shaking up. Yeah. You know, um, speaking of things that's shaking up in you in the politics. I want to get your thoughts on something. Um, I wanted to touch bases on this in my previous episode, but I really didn't touch too much mm -hmm. into it. Uh, what's your thoughts on this Alabama governor? Oh man, <laughs> are you allowed to speak on that? Like, no, nah, I mean, you. I to me, I personally think uh, when it comes to women and their bodies, they make their decision. They make their decision. You know, um, I agree. Uh, Pac said it best. You know, um, but when we talking about a woman in the in the decision on their body, you know, like I remember I was in um, you know, like I wanna say middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, I know one of one of my uh friends I had in middle school, um, you know, he was going through a situation with one of his uh relatives where that was um raped by by a family member and, and she had she had the baby, mm -hmm. you know, because yes, you know, and um because the family was kinda like, yo, you know. You know, we ain't gonna talk about it. And mm. you know, it, it's 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 messed up because you know, it, it, it lets you know how 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 far how far that behavior from the past travels to where we are now. Mm -hmm. You know, like this is nothing new. Like they've always that you know, that's always been a big thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, other people telling other people what to do with right themselves right you know so it's starting to become so alarm like now so it's yeah like, like i just feel as though um you know it's just it's crazy you know i was watching uh if i'm not mistaken 
think Ish said this on one of his shows. And it made me think, he was like, just imagine if someone, you had sex with a girl. Yeah. And you know, you just had that one night thing or whatever, and whatever happened. So you mean to tell me I'm forced? I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, don't yeah. get me wrong, you yeah, know what yeah, you yeah. get yourself into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're forced to have this child now yeah. with this person. Yeah. You're forced. Yeah. And this is something I don't agree with down Alabama. You know, this is big to me, man. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they said you cannot get an abortion even if you have incest. Yeah, that was, or that's rape. wild. Or rape. That's wild. And like, I think it goes. And it's uh, men that voted. It's not a yeah. single female on there that voted that. Well, I mean, you see the Me Too movement and stuff like that. You yeah. know, I, it, it, I mean, I don't it's, get religious and nothing like that, yeah. but a lot of this stuff is right in the Bible, mm -hmm. you know? Um, a lot of this behavior mm -hmm. is right in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I do know, but we get into that on another, on right. another topic. Um, but, you know, I think people, man, some of the way people think, man, is just off the wall, bro. Like... You know, it just makes you say to yourself, like, yo, there's some people out here that are really sick, you right. know, and, 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 and far gone. You yeah. Know? Um, I wanted to speak on Nipsey Hussle. Um, yeah. Because a lot of people, you know, I'm starting to see, I seen in your comments, someone was like, yo, you like Nipsey Hussle. Yo, that's big for me. I, I was that, like. I was like, hold on, I got a problem with that. Because <laughs> I, I was just thinking, like, you always in different areas, you know, you would be with politicians. If I'm not mistaken, I don't even know the list of celebrities you met, you know. You, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, did I see you with Jesse Jackson? Jesse, yeah. See, I ain't tripping. <laughs> Ron ain't got me that on. You know, um, you know um, a lot of different people. Like, yeah, um, man. You got a lot of things going for yourself, but the community, the yeah. community aspect, like, what are you trying to achieve yeah. with that? Because I know you're in your position with the um, human for relations sure. and chair. Yes. But I know, going, knowing you, from Lincoln, yeah. Um, you always try to get everyone involved, yeah. And the way today, um, so the, the way society is today, yeah. it seems like I hate to say it like that, but a lot of people losing hope. Yeah. Like, what is your mission? Um, to put that hope back, you know, and, and 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 help people to take a deeper dive within themselves. You know, one of the things that I've been doing lately is really not seeing people for the people on the outside, but really seeing people like you know, within their spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and that goes for whatever race they are. You know what I mean? I feel as though a lot of times people aren't understanding of things. You know, it's, it's just like... They are understanding aren't, or aren't? aren't. Okay. They aren't understanding mm -hmm. of, of a lot of different things. It's just like, uh, you know, say one of your... Say, one, say you're talking to one of your homeboys that's so used to being, um, like, loud and excited, right? right? And then when you see him and he's like, oh, it's good, Dad. You're yeah. like, damn, he acting funny. What's wrong with him? Right. Like... But the whole time, he might be going through some shit in his head. You know right. what I mean? It, it's, some, it's something going down in his head. Right. And that's one of the things that I've learned as I've been getting older. Like, everybody got their own problems and situations that they're going through. You don't know what a person is going through when they lay their head down at night. That's deep. And that's just been one of the things that I've been trying to carry with myself, like, each and every day with each person that I interact with. Right. And it's been, uh, it's been, it's actually been interesting, the response that it gets back when a person that's coming at you negative, but you respond to them in the positive. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how their whole energy just shifts, no matter how hard they try to stay in that, that mode. Right. But it's just like, it's like, damn, how could I, how could I be, this man. dude just, Right. This dude just, I just cursed this dude out and all he told me was, yo, have a good day, man. Right. Like, yo, 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 like, he's like, yo, yeah, man. Like, he's like that, like, yeah. why am I this man? Yeah, like, 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 yeah. No, I, I like that, man. I like that, I like that uh, turnaround now. That book you wrote, um, yeah. you know, break down the impact. I want you to break down the word impact. Yeah, so basic, I, uh, oh, yeah, give you some, I definitely give you a couple of examples, like, I know for the for the word I, you know, it talked about identity. Mm -hmm. You know, I think identity is a big thing. Um, especially amongst people of color. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably a whole nother show you could get into. Right, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but, you know, we talk about identity. I think that's something that so many people lack. A lot of people don't know themselves, so mm -hmm. that's, that, that causes a lot of the turmoil and stuff that we got going on now. You know, a lot of these uh, people with power, they didn't have power to begin with. Mm -hmm. So now that they got it, they don't even know what to do with it. Because or that's abusing not, it. Uh, they don't know what to do with it, you know, and, and they don't know they, they don't know themselves, right, you right. know, and you could, you know, it's even just like when you meet people, like, 
it's a different vibe when you meet somebody who really know themselves. Mm-hmm. Like you like, yo, I respect that. Yo, right. like that's that's dope. Like right. they ain't all hype. But then you see somebody walk in all loud and just screaming and you like, cool. Right. Alright, right. right. yeah, you peep the vibe, man. And 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 I use the letter I for that. Um, to talk about identity and just knowing yourself. Um, M, I talked about Mondays. I think Monday is a thing that has become a, a kind of like a way for people to create another excuse to push stuff back. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you always be hearing people talking about, yo, I'm going to start this diet Monday. Right. Or, yo, I'm going to start reading this book Monday. I'm going to start that assignment Monday. We done said that plenty of times in college. Right, right. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna, right. Yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that Monday. But it creates like an invisible hold on yourself because it's like, yo, you don't have to wait to that day to start what you want to do. Like you could literally start that like at that moment. Right. You know what I mean? Um, P, uh, we talked about progress. You know, you got to keep progressing. You got to keep moving. You got to step out of your comfort zone to, to get where you want to go. Mm. Um, a, we talked about some action. You know, uh, a lot of people just, I want to make this move. I'm about to make this move. Mm-hmm. I'm about to make this move. You know, that's one of the key reasons why I embrace the man of impact because I like to to be about the action and, and, and really come through because I, I like that feeling of knowing like, ah, right, we did everything that we set out to do mm-hmm. plus more. Um, C, we talked about like your character, you know, that, that comes with you everywhere, you right. know. Your character, people, people, your character going to speak for you even when you're not around. Right. You know, if you a stand up guy, you're going to hear nothing but people saying, yo, that's a stand up dude right mm-hmm. there. Nipsey, his character lives on. Right. You know what I mean? That's that's not that's all you hear people saying. He was a solid. I haven't heard one person well, say amazing, anything right. bad about him. Right. You know even, what listen, I mean? and the funny thing is, I don't mean to say this, but like, even when Nipsey smacked the hell out of this one guy, I know you remember that. You had to respect no, that. No, right? He went into his bed, he killed him. Hold right. up. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it, but, yeah. no, but all jokes aside, though, that's real, though. Yeah. Yeah, that takes a long way, but um, and get back to T. Oh, and T, we end up talking. What was T? Man, I think T, we end up talking about. Uh, I forgot. No we're about to get back no, to that. No, we're gonna have to get back to what we talking he, he about. He broke it down from impact. You know, if you want to take the T off, you already know how to impact. 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 <laughs> no, real right. Impact. You feel me? But uh, I wanted to uh, get your oh, thoughts. Oh, T, we talked about talking. My fault. Um, talking um, because it's one of the things that people have gotten away from doing. Um, you know, people don't know how to talk no more. It's right. and it's and yeah, and it's little stuff because. You know, all it takes is for you to talk to get to where you, where you might be headed in life. Mm-hmm. You know, I, uh, a quick example, um, I went to an art show with my mom, and I was not in the art mm-hmm. at all. Like, I did not care <laughs> about it. <laughs> no, like, there wasn't the, anything on my mind. Right. And uh, she was like, no, you need to come. So I ended up coming. And, you know, the, the, the part about me and giving back and stuff, I saw somebody that was moving Pepsis and stuff. And um, I went to ask them if they needed help, so I helped them move the stuff in. Come to find out, he the owner of the whole thing. Building. Harlem Fine Art Show. Um, you guys could check them out. They're the largest traveling African-American art show. He gave me my first internship, Mr. Dion Clark. Off of helping him? Off of helping him move some waters and sodas, bro. And, and you didn't even want to go to this event? At all, bro. That respect. internship is how I got introduced to one of my mentors who introduced me to half of the celebrities I know. That's crazy, man. Yeah, bro. And he told me straight up on the spot. He was like, yo, I like your character. I like what you're doing. Um, I don't have a lot of money to pay you, but I right. can give you more than what the money going to pay. Right. And it has, man. Opportunities. So, yeah, forever you know? grateful for him, too. Opportunities. Um, I want to get your thoughts on these cop killings. Yeah. What's up? Where do we start? I don't even know. You know, they just recently had an, um, an issue that happened or yeah. took place in Norristown. Yeah. You know, where they had a girl actually sock a cop, you know, um, yeah. because the, the cop looked like he socked her. Um, you have a woman that was pregnant, got shot, I saw, and killed. Yeah. That turned, I turned my, I punched my damn steering wheel that, I couldn't when even I heard watch the shot. That, yeah. As soon as I heard the shot, I just turned the phone off and punched my phone. Yeah. I mean, punched the, the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. And then um, I think they just arrested this 13 year old or 12 year old today. Yeah. And they, like, was manhandling him. Just wild. And hey, what's your thoughts on that, man? My thoughts is pissed, angry. Cause y'all knew my thoughts. What's going on? Pissed, 
angry. It's my feelings. Pissed, angry, confused, empty. Because you get to a point where it's like, how many lives is it going to be before it stops? Right. And it seems like it's continuing to grow and go. And you realize how much deeper that it really is, where it's like, okay, we could go back to like, how they took, how people took um, black coding, right? You know, they let us go, they let blacks go from slavery. Mm -hmm. Then they say, okay, you're free slaves. Now you need an ID card. How I'm going to get an ID card? I'm broke. Exactly. I've been your slave all these years. Right, like, how cool. am I going to come up with these bricks? Send his ass to jail, mm -hmm. and he going to work for that. So then they take, you know, they take, you have, we saw the movie Life, right? Yeah, yeah, with Eddie Murphy. And, and, you know, and the dude life, that was right. walking, that was walking on the, uh, doing the. In the yard? Yeah, and it was like, hey, 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 Matt, hey, Captain, you hear him talking? Yeah, I, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. He's talking about you, you doing, I call him, I don't know, I need to talk about the black boy with the hat. Yeah. yeah, I need to talk about. Did that, and and and, and <laughs> to me, I feel as though they kind of did that with with cops. You know, they 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 took that and said, a certain group of people took that and they said, you know what, y'all on the same playing field. You need to watch them and make sure they don't take what's left for you. What's mm -hmm. left for you? Yeah. Not even what's, your, what's left for you. Mm -hmm. We done took our lives. Right. So if you don't want nobody to take what's the rest for you, boom. Because when, really, when you really look at it, it's like the community ain't going nowhere. The cops ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. You right? So it, it comes to the point where you say, well, where's the, where's the middle ground? Mm -hmm. where, where is the middle ground? Because when I talk to some old, some old heads, sometimes they be like, yo, I remember it was a time where we knew the cops. Mm -hmm. Thanks. We knew the cops, you know. And, and I remember when I was younger, to to a certain extent, we knew you knew certain cops. I about to say, I went. I, I, I say I say it again. I was a participant in Powell. Police yeah. Pow, wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. Real. That's taking like, it back. Yeah. 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 And, and, and cops was cool back then. Right? Yeah. You feel me? But, yeah. So 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 one of the things that I've been working on uh, was the shoe hoops, not guns. And um, I actually bought the police department in on that. Mm, I think a lot of times, um, one of the biggest things I see with, with, between officers and the community is there's no understanding. Right. You got two people on edge, right? You got you got you got you got the you got the people in the community who got no trust in them because they haven't been shown a reason to have trust in you. And then you got officers, right? A lot of new ones as well who's going off of what they see on TV, what they hear from people that's been in, 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 in the system for, for forever mm -hmm. and, and telling them and, and relaying it down to them. So they are automatically on edge. You got people that's not going through psychological tests that they need. Right. You got people that have been uh, bullied. Mm -hmm. Bullied, they wasn't, some wasn't the most popular people when they were growing when they were growing up. Right. And now you giving, you're you giving them the all the popularity they need. Right. You know what I mean? So so what you what you think right. is gonna happen, especially if you not if you don't have the right the proper person in front of you training you. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I've seen some police departments that have been outstanding and I'm like, damn, they doing some dope stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I've seen some that I'm like, whoa, this shit need to be shut down. Like right. like like you know what I mean? And 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 I think it just comes it it, it comes down to like there has to be some type of understanding mm -hmm. and there has to be some type of accountability, you know, for these officers that's just trigger happy that just take out a person because of their skin tone mm -hmm. and then blame it on a fear. Mm -hmm. That's I was not, about to say that's I just not, to mention fear. That's 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 not that's not nah. They that, in that environments work. that they're not comfortable in or accustomed to. Yeah. You know, um but before um you know we end this episode, I just wanna know something. Uh is there anything that you would like to let your audience know and uh, sure. what's what's up coming in 2019 for you? For sure. So we got the documentary coming out, Hometown Hero Club. Make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Uh, you already know the brand, Hometown Hero Club. Mm -hmm. Y'all could definitely purchase these. Um, you could come, you could all at me, um, Ashton underscore Burrell on IG, AshtonBurrell.com. Uh, we do speaking engagements. We do workshops. Um, 
we do anything. Anything you need us to do, we, we can make happen or we know somebody that can make it happen. Right. And um, we just out here just motivating, man, and just, just giving the people, you know, hopefully what they what they want. And, and I'm not going to say hopefully what they need because I don't know what everybody right. needs. <laughs> but I know everybody could always use a smile on their face, right. some type of positivity in their life. And that's what we possess a whole lot of. Um, so that's what we're giving out. You can also purchase the book on barnesandnobles.com, amazon.com, okay. the website, ashtonburrell.com. That has everything for you. Um, we got the documentary dropping. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I ain't missing Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, What else we got dropping? Um, the Shoe Hoops Not Guns, mm -hmm. June 19th. That's going to be in Highland Park, New Jersey. Um, and that's going to be the first collaboration I do with the police department and the fire department. Well, that's heavy. There. Yeah, that's heavy. That's um, heavy. So we got that jumping off. We bringing shoe hoops to gun, not guns, to Philly, July. We're gonna need you on board. Wait, so what's up definitely. Yeah. I was gonna say something. So wait, is this gonna be like a tour? Throughout? Yeah, we gonna tour, man. We gonna tour. We gonna tour. We gonna hit everybody, man. Every everybody got to get this. And this is something. This is something that you're you're orchestrating. Yeah, orchestrated the whole thing. So basically, shoe hoops, not guns. Um, it's basically a basketball game right. that we're using um, to educate the people on, on gun laws, mm -hmm. um, bring awareness to gun violence, um, and just bring the community together. You know, some of the things that um, we'll have in store, resume building on site. Um, Where the Anthony? On site at the game. What? Um, we're going to have like career development on site at the game. Mm -hmm. um, basically, what we're trying to do is just give people a reason not to shoot. You know what I mean? There's so many lives that should still be here. Right. If there was an opportunity presented, you know, right. people wouldn't have even been in the situation to even do what needed to be done. I mean, know? since within you have, you know, I was trying to end this on some smooth stuff, but he just ended it even more smooth. <laughs> you know, he just broke it down on a uh, shoe hoops, not guns, right? Yeah, shoe hoops. Absolutely. Man, Ashton Burrell, you know, former, well, fellow Lincoln alumni. You know, just like myself, man. We out here, we grind. I'm gonna see this man at the top, man. This oh, yeah. man ain't gonna never stop. And I'm actually sitting next to someone that's in a damn chair, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, counseling, man. I'm proud of this guy, man. Episode 22 of the Dev Hall Show. Y'all already know how they go. Yeah.